On the table today, we're taking a look at the mighty Castle Grayskull Masters of the Universe Origins. Hey everyone, it's Dan at Squirrel Stampede, and a look at this mighty castle and many of the new Origins figures that have been appearing throughout this past year. And so, oh! Squirrel Stampede, I will destroy you! Ha 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 ha! Nothing can stop Ninjor! Uh, oh no! Ninjor has escaped! How has this happened? I was just looking at his box and now he's out! Ninjor has escaped! Someone do something! Oh yeah? How about Ninja Squirrel? Ninja Squirrel! My arch enemy! I will defeat you in battle! Ninja Squirrel, I will destroy you! Oh, I hope that squirrel gets Ninja. Oh no! Anyhow, lots of great figures to look at today, including this massive castle, this massive, impressive, classic, reimagined playset. So lots to open up. Let's get right to this and see if you can find your favorite masters of the universe. Squirrel Stampede! Please squirt, squirmin. And a squirrel eye. The box of Castle Grayskull. Pretty large, takes up most of my table. Pretty sure Skeletor wants all the acorns that are inside. And the castle comes with a special edition Temple of Darkness Sorceress figure. Over onto the back, pretty impressive too with kind of a character guide of everything going on with Origins. It's definitely got this 80's retro design going. The castle on a sculpted mountain with some dry ice fog machine things going on. And out of the box, the castle mostly placed together. He-Man, you have been given the keys, or power sword, to open up your new villa. Go ahead and open that door for us. And the castle of Grayskull is now opened. Again, it's really tall. I can barely fit this in on my camera view. Pretty much one of the best playsets ever created, Castle Grayskull. Right now, it's somewhat still closed up for carry. You'll notice every angle of the castle sculpted, beautifully painted. The new plastic is a little more of a softer plastic. We still have that epic handle up top to carry around. You may also notice a really nice improved hinge system. We've got hinges going all the way down with a rod all the way through. One of the troublesome features of the original castle was the plastic hinge work. Those are pretty much all cracking to this day. It's really hard to find a nice clean castle that isn't cracked apart. Plastic just doesn't last that long. Anyhow, let's open up. We still have little latches on the side. And then now we can see what's going on in there. So inside the castle, it pretty much features all the basic things of yore. We have the working elevator, computer control center, main throne chair, three floors, laser weaponry up top, flag, and some classic sticker work. There is also the infamous this thing. Want to demonstrate, Big Gray Squirrel? Yeah, I got this. Yeah, whatever this boarhead metal fist thing is, you really need to practice. Also included are a few other weapon rack things for various other kinds of weaponry that you would need at your castle. There's a laser gun and a pretty nice battle axe. Oh, and you can't forget this rickety old ladder too. It's really funny how there's so much tech in this universe and then they have a rope wooden ladder. Interesting times this universe is. Hey, where's the sorceress? Oh, good to see you, Sorceress! Oh wait, are you standing on the trap door? I am. Ah! So the classic trapdoor feature still works. It's actually kind of one of the most confusing features of the castle, I always thought. I mean, here's the Sorceress. Isn't it kind of cowardly of her to have a trapdoor? Ah! Yet, maybe this golden recliner is meant for He-Man. But what if he accidentally turns wrong to talk to the sorceress? Hey, I gotta hey, tell I'm you- Oh, no! Even worse, those few times when Skeletor actually conquers Castle Grayskull. See you, He-Man! <laughs> <laughs> of course, we all know who really will get control of the chair. And 
and I'm sure Tiny Chipmunk Squirrel will get a turn too. Anyhow, the new Castle Grayskull is constructed beyond expectations and is loads of fun with the Origins figures. So how about we open some more Origins? They're kind of tricky to collect. There's Orko, one of the harder ones to find. It's going to be hard to open up a package with the card pig still in there. But you got to have Orko involved, right? And Orko's so vivid. I want to say the Manny Faces Orko Trapjaw Scare Glow series, new for 20, so this was last year, somehow got delayed and then disappeared. Horrible start to the series to have your second wave do this to you. Orko may have unpredictable magic powers, but his loyalty and pure heart are never in doubt. Let's get Orko out. Is that all you've got, Ninja Squirrel? You are so weak. It is you! And there is Orko out of the package. I love the fact that they give him a floaty stand now, a sparkly purple floaty stand with a little bit of articulation on there too. I actually still have my original Orko. He's pretty well beat up. The original had this great ripcord feature that would send Orko spinning and vibrating across the table. The newer one though has some better articulation and a better look. Lots of love for Orko. This is one figure I didn't mind spending a little extra money on. Also these guys still come with these great mini comics. These are a lot of fun to read. Double trouble with Orko. And on the back they have the character guides just like years of yore. Somehow I lucked out at finding a decent priced Manny Faces though, the new for 20 figures that were hard to find. I believe I also found this one on Amazon for just a regular sale price. The actor Manny Faces changes his face to portray different roles on stage and in battle. Basically three characters in one with this one. Right now sporting the robotic face. Let's open up, see how he looks. Do you know the technique of Hoya? I really like the vibrant, cartoony color of all these figures. They really stand out, almost fluorescent like. All the piecework and sculpting, so nice with these. I'm always trying to figure out if Manny Faces is wearing a shirt that's just skin orange, or if that's just his skin. Whatever happened to this guy must have been horrific. So we start right now with his robot face, and up on top we've got the spinner classic dial, and we'll rotate around. Oh, we've got his scary dragon face, the face that Skeletor locks him in and causes real trouble in the valley. And then turn again for his kind, kind helper face of many faces. It's crazy how nostalgic that face looks. I can almost hear him kindly talk to He-Man. Hey, He-Man, how's it going? Whoop. Yeah, his head apparatus is a little tall with this one. Maybe a little tippy if you don't get him in the right position. Has his classic ray gun too, in orange. Manny Faces also comes with the Double Trouble. I believe the comic books are all the same for each series that comes out. And while we are still on the topic of multiple faces, let's take a look at Triclops. Triclops being one of my first bad guys I think I had back in the day. Evil and sees everything. Triclops' multiple vision modes and optic attacks make him a dangerous soldier in Skeleton's army. Opening up. Get back here, Ninja! Ninja Squirrel will have your head! And Ninja will have Ninja Squirrel's tail! Which I will use as a sword to defeat you! Triclops is out! Really could use some clear eyes to reduce that redness. That's gotta be really uncomfortable. What a figure this is. What an interesting Masters. Most of his body is pretty much normal, except for that huge head feature thing going. And of course, turn visor for different eye to spy for Skeletor. So right now, let's actually get the clear eyes on. And... Oh no, that's even worse! That's even worse! More clear eyes, more clear eyes! Okay, that's much better. That's soothing. Soothing relief for Triclops. It's good to have a new figure of Triclops as my old Triclops is pretty much melting. The plastic on him is so sticky and someone really chewed up his hand quite a bit there. So yeah, nice to update the Triclops figure. Triclops comes with a sneak attack. Uh oh, not sneak attack. Oh, ew. Go away, Ninjor. So a sneak attack comic book with Ninjor. Oh, that's interesting. Inside Triclops is a removable parts outline and we've kind of noticed this accidentally 
arms will pop off, your torso will pop off. I didn't know the feet will pop off pretty easily in play. And then you can just place them back together. That kind of happened to us. We were playing outside on a warm day and I think really softened up the plastic. Interesting how that is in the pack this time. Well, let's keep Skeletor's henchman theme going with Merman. You have to drink a lot of water and when you're talking about Merman. Ocean Warlord. Lurking in the darkest depths of the ocean, Merman awaits Skeletor's order to attack Eternia's surface world, freeing Mermaid from his plastic shell. Thank you, Ninja! Ha 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 ha! It tickles, Ninja Squirrel! You are no match for Ninja! Merman, out of pack. My kids like to call him Catman, though, for some reason. They see a cat face on the guy. He's kind of a plain figure, very aqua-esque. The feet aren't really painted well, but it's all classic Merman for sure. One of Skeletor's main henchmen we see quite a bit, so Merman's important to collect. Unfortunately, my mini-comic got torn. Here it is, Dimensional Doom with Skeletor on the front. It was kind of locked into the package and I tore it right down She-Ra. Sorry, She-Ra. Maybe I'll get a second chance at a better version of that comic book. Funny, I thought I had an original mermaid to share with, but I guess I don't. So here is the merman of the day. Nice orange fuzzy pants, by the way. I wonder how that works underwater, the fuzzy pants. Anyhow, I think merman's probably going to want to spend some time with this octopus trying to escape from the dungeons. And uh, since we're on topic with some of the more boring figures, we've got Zodak too. Zodak is always along for the ride for Masters, but probably the most kind of like, that's all he does figure. Everybody has a cool gimmick, but Zodak just seems to have some cool armor and a cool helmet and maybe a cool name. Zodak's immense power comes from the price of maintaining the cosmic balance from anyone, good or evil. Perhaps he would look good up on that throne inside Castle Grayskull, because he does like to ride around in a very similar looking chair. And releasing the Zodak. Oh yeah, how about this here? <laughs> oh, impressive, but Ninjor will win the day. The Zodak figure is all sorts of interesting. He's got Merman's webbed feet. What happened there, Zodak? Eh, maybe in some universes, fish-like feet is desired. He's got this great Wonder Bread-like armor and a very classic retro-styled helmet. I also see some fin work in his forearms, too. This dude has the most hairiest back, though. What happened? Zodak must be part beast. Yikes! Look at all that back hair. If you're gonna be a muscle man, you might want to shave some of that off. And it continues on to his chest area. Thank goodness the armor is hiding it. After seeing all that chest hair, I'm really hoping this loincloth is indeed fuzzy armor. But he is a classic figure and when you see a group of Masters figures together, usually you're gonna see Zodak. And perhaps Tiny Chipmunk Squirrel will let him sit in the chair? No? No? <laughs> Shall we move to the front yard now, where we will see the aerial talents of Stratos, the winged warrior. Leader of the heroic bird people of Avion, Stratos watches over Eternia from high in the sky. And Stratos' torso here indicates where Zodak got some of his body fur. It must be feathers. And opening up. You cannot stop me, Ninja Squirrel! Maybe, but I just teamed up with Mr. Miyagi! Hiya! Stratos out of the box showing our first casualty of joint popping offage. It's actually really simplistically fixed. We've got a post here and it will fit into our shoulder. How you feeling Stratos? Better? He's better. Oh, and we also have some wing clippages to clip onto his wrists. So now Stratos can fly about Eternia. Stratos and Zodak, I didn't realize they had so much in common until today. They've got the fuzzy, furry, feathery body type, and they have very similar retro helmet types. Stratos, though, is a little more feathery for flight, even has a nice little jetpack piece on his back. Nice figure, though. I always really liked Stratos. I like the color scheme with the red, the blue, and the gray. Fun figure. I think we could even flip these clips around and make him fly better, too. Stratos, if you'd now like to take a flight around the table, go for it. Wow, look at him go. He's so agile. 
like a bird. A hawk! It's Stratos. Stratos is a great Masters of the Universe winged warrior. Now for another favorite Masters, we've got Roboto, Heroic Mechanical Warrior. There always has to be a robot warrior, or a droid, or a mechanical machine being involved with stories like these, and Roboto is our guy. Love the mechanics inside this suit too. Built to be mighty and programmed to be courageous, Roboto protects his friends and defends Eternia. And he still has that classic action feature of twist his waist, his gears turn and jaw move automatically. And opening up. Ninja Squirrel, where did you go? Hey, I have a message from Ninja Squirrel. What's that? Hooah! Hooah! Thanks, no problem, Ninja Squirrel. And out of pack Roboto, a very nostalgic robot, very much how we thought robots would look like in the 80s. All around, you can see inside the mechanical machinery of this guy. I love the clear plastic plating of the torso. I hope it stays clear and not yellow over time. And of course, when we move his torso, his mouth clicks open and closed. Let's get in a little closer and see those gears work more. How they turn about opening and closing his mouth shovel. Over onto the back you get a better view. You can see his shoulder implants into his body there. But you can also see the back central gear turn about and then move and click the jaw again. A little more simplistic than the original Roboto actually. Bringing in my original who has yellowed a little bit over time. There's a few more gears inside. We still have the main red and blue gears on either side, but there used to be uh, some yellow and uh, orange gears. And also, if you really peer in there, Roboto had a heart, which was a big part of his story, I believe. There's a heart inside there in between all the gears. Kind of missed that on this new one. It's kind of vacant. He, I guess he just doesn't love, doesn't have a heart in there. And there also seems to be a plate of two-dimensional graphics inside the original Roboto to give it some circuit board. And I don't really see that with this one here. It's pretty much a clear torso with those central gears. And we still have three interchangeable weapons, so that's really nice. Right now, Roboto is sporting the rotational axe flangey thing, and we can simply remove. I think I like this one the best, his little robot claw arm. And then one more. For battle, we've got the blaster arm, which is actually pretty nice, too. Roboto's one of those masters of the universe you don't want to miss. If you get a chance to see him, I highly recommend. Next up, I would like to say something about Ninjor, even though he escaped. Ninjor uses uncanny stealth abilities to spy on and surprise attack the heroes of Eternia. I hardly remember Ninjor at all from back in the day. But the figure does come with a variety of weapons and some great twist into powerful battle positions. If you're a fan of ninjas, keep an eye out for Ninjor. Also, quick, close up the jaws of Castle Grayskull. Hordak, the ruthless leader of the evil horde, is back too. Hordak vows vengeance as he marches his evil horde into battle to conquer all of Eternia. And let's open up the new evil horde. The Hordak figure is a lot of fun. Starting with that head, oh my, it's just enormously huge. Then we've got his signature Horde bat across his chest on some armor that's very similar to old school Masters in some ways, but I think it peels off a little differently. He's weighted down by a very heavy plastic cape. More web defeating with bat boots. Nice silvery metallic belt, Hordak. We also have his great signature Horde blaster bump weapon. Come on over, Roboto. We'll give you a little sucker punch. Oh, and it barely functions. Maybe if I hold it. There we go. Down goes Roboto. What a sinister bump weapon. And then we've got his classic... Oh, and I can't even remember the character name on this guy. But Hordak's little bat minion that sits on his arm and then flies about to do his bidding. Okay. A contest for a squirrel less than half my size. Interesting, because that is my final move. <laughs> uh. Ninja Squirrel wins! Oh, and here's some instructions to help you place yourself back together. See you later, Ninja! 
And that is the mighty Castle Grayskull. What a playset! If you like today's video, please give us a squike, a squirrel eye, but maybe, and a squamant. We would love to squamant with you on all our favorite Masters characters of the day. What is your favorite? Let us know. Thanks for watching. That's what I have to say about that.